That's broken. You get 55% higher efficiency, allowing you to outtrade the Spitfires. You dream of world domination, but those allies keep beating you in the air and bombing the fatherland. You ask yourself, is there a way out? Yes, there is. It's called getting good, and this is what this video will help you become without judging your questionable political beliefs. Strap your seatbelt, because we're flying into the world of Hoi 4 Meta Luftwaffe Edition. Now, before we look at those juicy templates, we gotta talk doctrines. If you find yourself in a sweaty multiplayer setting, winning the air war won't be easy. That's because you're not on top of the food chain, the Brits have the S-tier supermarine fighters, while the Soviets and Americans can eventually drown you with mass production. Therefore, you can't get cute and use battlefield support, as it just puts your fighters at an even bigger disadvantage. What you need is some integrity in your life, so take the right path and do your best to clear the skies so your cast can bomb with impunity. There is one case where battlefield support is exceptional and can make you crush everyone, but it requires a very specific plane design and you'll get to see what it is later in the video. This covers doctrines, now let's move over to fighters. Your only choice of Mio 4 light fighters is Messerschmitt, and leveling it up needs to be your top priority. Messerschmitt is not a bad Mio. If it was a woman, Wouldn't I'd that? rate it as 8 out of 10. The only trouble is that your cousins over the pond have bagged a tenor, and their Spitfires will always burn you if you don't outproduce them. Fortunately for you and all the burn victims out there, there are levels to this thing. And if you want to limit the damage to a first degree burn, you need to pick the correct path. And the correct one is not straight down right, center, or left. What you need to do is pick the left straight at the first fork and then continue down the center. I've tested the four different combinations between the left and central paths and the one I'm recommending came out on top. It gives you a combined 88% buff in the fields of air attack, air defense, speed and agility. This can also be said about the central path, yet that one was the worst performer of the four while the left center was the best because it provides the highest air attack bonus, some air defense and decent speed and agility increases. Who knew there's actually such a thing as meta when you look at a specific country and don't generalize. Enough talk about Messerschmitt, let's see what fighter templates you need to use. My advice for you is to build two types of fighters. One is for defense, which will also help you take the low countries and friends, and one will be for projecting air power in the east. Yes, you need to run two separate production lines for those, but it's worth it, as the performance difference between the two fighters is quite noticeable. Let's check out the defensive fighter. I'm using the 1940 airframe as reference, as this is what you'll be producing for most of the war. My meta design for Germany has three quad heavy machine guns up top, a single engine 3, and two armor plates. I do not recommend using self-sealing fuel tanks for the Germans. It is a fantastic module if and only if you have the rubber to spare, and as Germany, you do not. Yes, you can build synthetic plants, but you will need a lot of mills to mass produce fighters, so doubling your resource need per factory is not a great idea. Besides, you trade away some of that rubber anyway due to your laws and you need to produce motorized equipment. So take my advice and don't get tempted by the devil's module. As for the triple heavy MGs up top, I did recommend substituting one of those with dual cannons one in the past, but that was two expansions ago. There were some tweaks from Paradox and now my tests show that this is the best setting. Good news for you because you won't have to research a separate tech here. The two armor plates down there are great for air defense, but they will limit your range a lot. As I said, it's enough for attacking France, but after you're done, you need to turn these fighters into defensive ones and position them very strategically so you can defend Western Europe with 100% mission efficiency. And yes, in this example, if those two villages near the Austrian border are not covered, you will not be able to properly defend against enemy air raids happening over the Ruhr. Yeah, that's paradox logic for you. As for offensive fighters, you need to sacrifice air defense for range because the air regions in Eastern Europe and Northern Africa are quite big. To ensure maximum coverage, this is the attacking fighter I recommend. One armor plate is swapped for extra fuel tanks and you have just enough thrust to put a light MG defense turret. Why am I not recommending drop tanks here? Because it has a weight of two, which won't allow you to put a third module if you're using armor plates. And its range 
range bonus is 25 instead of the 50% you get with extra fuel tanks. Simply put, the drop tanks plus armored build gives you one extra air defense and it's one IC cheaper to produce. But my build gives you an extra 163 kilometers in range and 1.2 air attack, which is way more important when you're trying to project air power. 1940 fighters are done and dusted, let's fly over to Cass. When it comes to close air support, the Hoi 4 community has this popular line of thinking which goes something like this. Whoa, dude, don't put air defense on Cass. your fighters will protect them. Just make them cheap and put lots of bombs on them. Now, there is some merit to this, as air defense doesn't protect you from ground base AA, but I still decided to run tests instead of relying on the World War II version of Bro Science. So I put 1100 of my fighters versus 1000 Spitfires and tested three types of Cass: A cheap one with low air defense, a regular one, and what I like to call the Gladiator Cass, which maximizes air defense at the cost of 4 air attack per plane. I put each of these variants alongside my fighters over a ground battle and ran the test for 10 days. You can see results on the screen. Yeah, I'm not kidding, I lost over 500 cheap casts in the span of 10 meager days, despite me having at least 10% more fighters than the enemy at all times. In other words, the low air defense cast meta quote unquote is busted. Yes, you'll suffer the same casualties from ground AA even with the expensive cast, but you need to put close air support over contested skies when you do Blitzkrieg and going for the cheap versions will cost you a lot even over short periods of time. The only scenario where I see cheap cast being effective is after you outnumber enemy fighters at least 2 to 1 and waiting for that to happen before you start bombing ground troops is not a great idea. So stick with the regular cast model or go for the gladiator one because it will help you minimize your fighter losses at the cost of some ground attack. Now, it's best to build cast on the Junkers Mio as you will get a massive 50% bonus to ground attack when it's fully leveled up. And how do you level it up? You click on every bomb icon and then proceed to turn Europe into a modern Bulgarian highway. I initially thought that Junkers is the best cast Mio in the game, but other majors like Italy, the UK and the US have come companies that give the exact same bonuses, so it's not better, but not worse than the rest. Now there is one last CAS model that I want to mention, and it's what I like to call the Giga Chat CAS. This one uses two level 3 engines because it has that big anti-tank 2 cannon up top, allowing it to have a massive 46.5 ground attack per plane. Because Junkers give you 50% extra ground attack, it actually makes more sense to build this CAS compared to a tactical bomber. But why bother with this thing when you can just build more of the regular cast? Because there is such a thing as air combat width. This term means that the number of bombers you can deploy over a battleground is limited by the number of battles happening below you. So you can't just put 10,000 casts and expect all of them to bomb enemy troops. That does not happen. Instead, you can maximize your impact by increasing the ground attack of each plane. And this is where this model really shines. You don't need to produce a lot of these, a few hundred over areas where you conduct your biggest ground operations will be enough. For the bottom modules of the GigaChat cast, I recommend dive brakes and if you find that you have some extra rubber, you can go for self-sealing fuel tanks because these babies are expensive and they need protection. Again, don't make this into your main cast as your rubber costs will skyrocket. Consider this as the special forces of the Luftwaffe and keep them small and elite. Now it's finally time to reveal the most broken mechanic in the German air game. But before I do, please leave a like if you are enjoying the video and consider subscribing, it's the only thing keeping me going. A year ago, I made a video about how multi-role fighters are so good that I consider it an exploit. Since then, Paradox came up with two expansions and had the chance to fix it. Not only did they not fix it, they made them even more broken. To make multi-roles work, you need to go down the battlefield support doctrine, 
appoint Hugo Sperle and select Continuous Strike as Spirit of the Air Force. This will give you 70% more mission efficiency when you do close air support or logistical strikes compared to what the fighters of the Allies have. Now, there are some weaknesses to this strategy, so if you're interested, go and watch my video, link is in the description. Now, let's zip past some less important airplanes. Naval bombers. You put the best torpedo mounting and engine you have, plus air ground radar, floats and extra range. Scouts. These are great to have in multiplayer as you can check what the enemy is doing before even you declare war. You can learn more about them from my specialized dedicated video, but here's the design I recommend. Use the 1936 medium airframe with the cheapest dual engines and put two range modules. If you need more range than that, you upgrade to dual engines too and stick another range module. Heavy fighters and medium bombers. You don't really need to build these as Italy has an S tier meal and can take care of that in multiplayer. Still, if you want to roleplay in single player, here are two templates you can try. I'm leaving them on the screen. Carrier planes. If you're the type of masochist who wants a modern German navy to contest the seas, you don't really need to pick the Dornier as Mio, as Messerschmitt gives bonuses to your carrier fighters. I recommend stacking two armor plates on carrier fighters, as range doesn't matter when you do carrier missions. As for the carrier naval bombers, I like this hybrid build that allows you to do both naval strikes and close air support with them when you park your carriers using the control plus H command. Now what about strategic bombers? Germany doesn't even have a meal for that so you shouldn't really be building them. Still, if you want to roleplay in single player, here's a nice model you can try. The last topic in this video is jet engine planes and if you're enjoying all the juicy deeds, please like and subscribe. It only takes a second for you and makes the hours of testing I did worth it. Now Paradox said that they made jet engines much cheaper with the latest expansion and I did test them out. Also, Germany has those research bonuses, so I bet you're wondering whether they will help you win the war late game. In short, no. Jet engines are not worth it compared to a regular 1944 engine. They make a razor thin difference in terms of performance and have crappier range. In my eyes, this is not a Wunderwaffe, so it doesn't justify researching three separate techs, possibly ahead of time, so sorry to be the bringer of bad news. Still, if you want to build some, this is the template I recommend. And that about wraps it up for Germany. It was very interesting for me to take an individual country and see what's best for her, so let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments. If the guide is well received, I will continue to make individual meta guides for all of the major countries. Thanks a lot for watching, now go and beat your friends, then tell them about this video.